All right, we've come to visit Fort Moultrie today. We will explore the Civil War history of Fort Moultrie with the help of Jim Muir. He is a Park Service volunteer, and he just does a great job of explaining the history of the fort. But before we get started with Jim, let's take a look at the original fort. The fort was built about 1808-1809, and from this you can see the original shape of the fort. And before the Civil War, they had placed guns on the walls of the fort that were much different than the original ones. Here you can see the guns on the wall and the walkway to get up to the wall. And then we can see a picture of the shot furnace with the officer's quarters behind it. And now let's turn it over to Jim. So this was the original Fort Moultrie. Um, it, it, you know, it was here in 1861, basically like this, when the state of South Carolina seceded from the Union in December of 1860. The garrison was commanded by a Major Anderson, and he had about 80 soldiers. And he saw the South Carolina militiamen the, and the houses that were built around it in the uh, outside, and he feared for an attack by the militia. So on the, December 26, he abandoned the fort. He left surreptitiously by dark through a sally port. It's right there. And, the, and he, he set the cannons on fire, the carriages on fire. He spiked the, the uh, powder holes <clears throat> and was gone. And the Confederate militia could tell something was happening because they saw the fires from the, uh, the, the caissons. So they stormed in, discovered it was empty, <clears throat> and uh, took over. And they were able to repair, repair a number of the guns, but then they brought their own guns that they started manufacturing in Richmond, and those two are uh, both Confederate guns. And, and, and Anderson and his gang that were out on Fort Sumter, Fort Sumter was still under construction. It wasn't finished. Um, and they didn't have much food, so a, a supply ship was dispatched. And the local newspapers were reporting the supply ship is here, supply ship is here, supply ship is here. Um, four days before the impending arrival of the supply ship, guns from Fort Moultrie began firing on Fort Sumter, April 12, 1861. So therefore you have the start of the Civil War from Fort Moultrie. So the cannon started firing. They hit the powder magazine in, at Fort Sumter and it exploded. Um, and two days later, Major Anderson, who knew General Beauregard, Beauregard was the Confederate general, who knew General Beauregard, um, offered to evacuate. He didn't surrender. We've, we've been given specific instructions. You don't say surrender. He evacuated Fort Sumter. All of the Union troops were given parole, and the Confederates occupied Fort Sumter. Though so there were several attacks by the Union um, monitors um, against Fort Sumter, none of them were successful. But if you remember the movie Glory, that happened right out here at Battery Wagner, which was a Confederate fort on Morris Island. After the victory of the Confederates at Battery Wagner, um, the Confederates evacuated and the Union took over. And the Union put its Parrot rifles, Parrot rifles were an invention in the early 1860s where instead of being smooth bore, you had rifling, like a rifle does. And they were extremely accurate, or they were more accurate, they were greater range <clears throat> and they had greater destructive ability. And they were right out there 
and they fired on Fort Moultrie, and they fired on Fort Sumter, and they could even get to the battery. They had that range to get just to the tip of the battery. After the war, Fort Moultrie was in shambles. Here's a picture of what it looked like before the war, where you have barracks, barracks, and barracks with a parade field. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the parade field right here. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the foundation yeah. of enlisted barracks. That's a foundation of enlisted barracks. And the other barracks went out where the flag is. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was shambles. The church, which you are hearing the bells from, was built in 1866 and they used much of the rubble uh, from Fort Moultrie to, dip to the foundations of the church. Wow. And they actually started taking more than the rubble and the army said, nah, -uh, you're, not, <laughs> you're not allowed. You, you've got the rubble, but you're not taking any more. Um, another interesting thing about the Civil War, all of this was destroyed and this is a traverse in eight, of 1820 to protect the powder magazine. And it's nothing but brick. And you notice that everything else in Fort Moultrie was destroyed except the powder magazine. Because the trajectory of the Parrot rifles was relatively flat, shooting from there, and, and we've still got our 1809 powder magazine. So the, so the traverse worked. Um, and we're going to go up the stairs and I'll point out the powder magazine. You notice it's got uh, buttresses around the wall um, and it's got a slate roof. So if it blew up, it would blow up that way. Um, and it had a lightning rod. So let's take a moment and go inside the magazine. And you can see all along the walls, they've got barrels of powder stored, and this would have been stacked to the ceiling during the Civil War. This is an 1830s cannon, um, and this is a Park Service um, way to reduce maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see it has elevation, deflection, and on top of that cannon you can see the touch hole where the fuse went. Um, this had a crew of five. The ones over there had a crew of 23. So you can see how technology, the, the, that we're going from oldest to newest. So here you can see a picture of the enlisted men's barracks. There and there. And the officers' barracks came out where the flagpole is. Um, the enlisted men lived upstairs, downstairs, was arms room and mess halls um, and the officers quarters had individual quarters for officers and their wives. And this is a confederate cannon. Uh, you know we've, we've got an analysis of all of the guns here um, and you can see it's it's like that one it's got elevation and traverse um, and this could have fired at Fort Sumter. I have to I'll have to I say it could have. I have the ability to verify that, but I'd have to go into the visitor center. And this is a traverse. Remember we had that traverse? This is a traverse. And it protected this gun from that gun, mm -hmm. and that gun from this gun. <clears throat> Why? Because when these guns were manufactured, they cooled from the outside in and that left irregularities um, and they could explode which is why you had the traverse so was the traverse added after the 1809 construction oh yes yeah because our yellow stops here oh it doesn't stop here it goes there but yes it, this was added from here you can see Fort Sumter and you can understand why this would be the place to bombard Fort Sumter from. Probably with cannons very similar to these. The Confederates evacuated Fort Moultrie in February of 1865 
and the Union Army came in and photographed the fort. And we can see all the destruction in these pictures that were left behind after Fort Moultrie was surrendered to the Union Army. Well, I hope you'll enjoy the visit to Fort Moultrie. See you later. Goodbye.